All right. Stream is live. It is a go go. Huh, she'd a go go, baby. That's a nice little, little Beautiful Joe reference. God, I wish they did more Beautiful Joe. Love that game. My dog is currently staring at me. Like she wants something from me. All right. So, we're back with more Corpse Party. Let me. Oops, I clicked off the damn window. There we go. I have to check that audio level because for some reason this game loves to fuck with me on the audio level. So is it turned down by like that many decimals? That should be fine. Music is bumping as always. We're back with more Corpse Party Book of Shadows. Where we last left off, we were in the middle of a of a, of the second chapter, which I do not remember the name of, but we were playing as Mayu. We ran into uh what's his name? VIP, my man, blonde dude. Can't remember his name. What's his name? It's like shit. <laughs> I can't remember the dude's name. It would be in bonuses, right? Bonuses will show me the names. Gallery of Sprites, why not? Oh, well, none of the, oh, spirits, my bad. I read it as sprites. You know, like, character portraits and shit. Damn it. Let's see, unlock status. I guess, I guess not. Did we unlock any more soul testimonies? No, we just got one for, uh, for Seika. All right. Forgot his name, Kishinuma? That's his name. Kishinuma. Alright. We ran into Kishinuma. Uh, he got separated from Ayumi. I believe that's her name. Can't remember. Too many goddamn Japanese names going around here. And we ran into someone who seemed to have been in the middle of a trap or something. Like, some random stranger. But she also has marks on her body as if she had succumb to a grim fate in the high school ghost school whatever the fuck but we are here to continue from there hopefully maybe get a couple of answers or make up a couple of theories as to what the fuck is going on in this horrible school time warp space whatever the hell so without further ado let me move my microphone closer to me there we go and let's Play some corpse party, shall we? I forgot all the, uh... I forgot all the, uh... Buttons. For, um... I forgot all the buttons to, like, quick saves and shit. Demise, that's where we're at. So, this was the last one we was at, right? Here we go. Alright. What's bracket blood? <laughs> Nothing. We're back with more corpse party. Can't wait to get into it. Hopefully, hopefully we learn some new things. The bucket would spill right onto her. I wonder what the hell is in there. Maybe it's nothing. But what if it's not? What if it's like acid, or even worse, like piss? anime shit you've been hearing about yeah that's what i thought too when i played the first course party by the way that's on youtube if you want to watch it uh but it's actually pretty fucking good it's way it's way better than i thought it would be let me lower this i thought the audio was already good but seems to still be kind of loud hopefully that's not too loud oh well bible black is different Take it from someone who has played Bible Black. Bible Black is different. That is a hentai. That is an eroge. And it is very... Very risque. Um... It's not your... It's not your... Well, what, what hentai is classified as normal. But it's not your normal hentai. I'll tell you that for sure. It's some uh, real rank dank shit going on in there. For example, someone gets fucked with a shotgun. 
and the trigger gets pulled. But that's not the first Bible Black. That's like one of the other ones. One of the other millions of Bible Blacks. The girl was thrashing wildly, unable to move or see, and too scared to call out for help. Sadly, this wasn't helping at all. It only, ser it only served to pull the plaster bus closer and closer to the edge of the shelf. To stick with high school DxD. I haven't finished high school DxD. I made it to the second season, I think? I was watching the dub version of it because I looked at the sub and I said, let me see what the dub's about. And the dub is hilarious. My man has a comeback for everything. It was impossible to say whether or not she had any inkling of the threat that loomed literally right above her head. It seemed increasingly likely that this was the intent behind the trap. If the victim attempted to escape, she would only wind up killing herself. To my knowledge, I think this is the only Quartz Party game that goes with like a full visual novel. But actually, that's a lie. There's the one that's technically after this, which is Sachiko's Birthday Bash or whatever, which is like a more comical one that I've heard about. But after that, I think they all go back to like exploration and stuff like that. This one still has elements of exploration, like it's Danganronpa. What do we do? What can we do? Don't panic. We just need to find some way of getting the bucket down from the ceiling. Can you reach it though? I think we should remove the bandages on her face first and try to calm her down. Well, I think that will make things worse. Either way, there's no time to lose. We have to do something, and we have to do it now. Let's get the bucket first. Let's do that. I'm pretty sure if you have a stranger that you don't know reaching for your face while you're all tied up and you can't see, you'll probably fuck up. So let's get the bucket. We can worry about the bandages later, but if the bucket falls, it's all over. We gotta do something about it pronto. You're right. Okay. I'll hold down the statue on the shelf then. Alright. And I'll try to get the bucket down. Make sure you hold on tight. Be careful. You're telling me to fucking be careful. I know. This is this is the MVP we're talking about. Do you know the shit that Kishinoma goes through? I'm telling him to be careful. This man faced ghost. Stared at the eyes of a fucking soul sucking ghost. Damn it. I can just barely touch the bottom of it. I can't get anywhere near the handle. Then hit it with a broom. <laughs> Don't try anything funny with it or it'll, or it'll spill. I know. God forbid there's sulfur acid there or something. Sulfur? Sulfuric. Yeah. Where the slightest spill would mean game over. Of course it would. The wiki article... The wiki article for Bible Black seems fairly innocent. It has to be. It has to be. Wikipedia is a family-friendly site. Also, anyone can put anything in a Wikipedia. So it has to be family-friendly. If you... If you want to, like, learn more about Bible Black, go to, like, I don't know, like a hentai forum or something. Any Anyone who tells you to watch Bible Black is probably the same people who go crazy over Boku no Pico. But the difference between Bible Black and Boku no Pico is that you can you can you can rock with Bible Black if you're into that, right? Boku no Pico. That's kind mm, that's mm, that's questionable. Some girl gets fucked with shotgun and then pulled the trigger on. Yeah, like I'm not sure if that's in the visual novel or if that's in the anime, but uh well, I know it's in the anime for damn sure. I've seen it. And fucking, and I, I believe it was like a bank robbery scene or something. <laughs> but that's not what Bible Black is about. Bible Black is about like satanic rituals and shit that cause sexual shit and then high school students being all mischievous and shit about it. Everyone's a jackass. It has a whole like overarching plot over the, over the series with like this, some people having like immortality and shit or some stuff like that. I don't remember. It was weird. It's weird, but, you know, I'll play it. Why not? <laughs> I played it before. I played the first one. We can try- Oh my god, the first one has so many endings. God. We can try stacking a few desks or chairs. Yeah, I think that might be our only option here. Oh 
the hell? Every single one is stuck fast to the floor. They won't budge. This brought to mind all the doors and windows that were firmly frozen in place. They might as well have been cemented walls. I didn't need convincing. I knew that Kishinuma said was true. Those desks and chairs weren't going anywhere. I had no other choice but to step in. Kishinuma, how about I piggyback your shoulder? How about you piggyback my shoulders? I mean, it's it's dangerous to make you reach for sulfuric acid, but Kishinuma is like twice your weight. I highly doubt that that would work. But you're wearing a skirt. Now's not the time to worry about that. Damn right. We need to get this done before the statue falls, right? Okay. What the hell is wrong with this desk? Is the floor buckled or something? Don't worry, Suzumoto. I got you. Just focus on what you're doing. Tell some girl. <laughs> okay. I swallowed nervously, then reached my hands over my head, carefully, careful not to make any sudden movements. I could reach the bucket's handle just fine, fortunately. Now all that remained was un was untie untying it and getting it down without spilling whatever happened to lie within. Motherfucking Kishinuma, if you fall? God, what the hell is in here? It's really heavy. It's like a rock. Whatever it was, it definitely wasn't liquids. It was solid, tangible weight. It felt almost as if it was the whole thing was filled to the brim with lead. Or maybe a rock. Just like a big rock. Or like a bowling ball. I tried my hardest to maintain balance while adjusting to the unexpected new mass in my hands, but... Oh shit, someone's gonna get got! It was no use. The buckets were slipping loose from my grip, and then there was nothing I could do to stop it. Evidently, my hands gave out, and the bucket was airborne. Someone had coated it with soapy water or oil, making it vertically impossible to hold on to. Whoever set this trap had apparently anticipated this very scenario and planned for it accordingly. We were meant to find this <laughs> We were meant to find this girl. We were meant to try rescuing her, and we were meant to fail miserably. This was all one big joke to someone. The bucket flipped over in midair, raining its contents down onto the unknowing, unsuspecting victim below. Directly onto her face. Ooh! Damn! It was acid or some shit. Her cries only lasted for one or two seconds. Is she dead? Yeah. So, this is the second chapter, right? Apparently, this this game is a this game is both a a prequel, sequel, and also an amalgamation of like alternate timelines from the first game. But apparently, what seems to be going on is that we are in a sort of time loop. Where there are people who died in the first game who are going through different things. And people, some people know the events that happen while others can't really remember. So far there's only one person who seems to know. But we haven't ran into him yet. Her cries only lasted for one or two seconds. In the last part someone got decapitated. And then I held their dead, dead head in my hands. <laughs> They were followed by a few convulsions in her leg, and then stillness. Thousands of assorted nails, razors, scissors, and tacks all struck the poor girl's face, piercing her soft cheeks and eyes and filling her mouth. It took almost no time- oh shit. It took almost no time at all for what was left on her pale, perfect skin to be dyed crimson. They played us, man. They played us. It's okay, Mayu. You didn't kill her. You didn't kill her. You mental? This isn't yours. This isn't our fault. God, no. It wasn't meant to be this way. I know. The way it was meant to be was Mayu was supposed to get splattered across a wall. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. There is no forgiveness in the eyes of the Lord. Oh, really? I chose wrong. 
that's interesting. From the handle instead of holding it from the side. Well, I mean, well, for it is, you know, Japan in their weird ways. Hey, Shark, by the way, Shark, I just, uh, got a bad ending. <laughs> Trying to get on the lotto jackpot or what? Um, no. I don't really play the lottery. Isn't this like the second one they're doing? Didn't they do like one already? Like fairly... Oh, that's okay. We gotta... You gotta head to bed, then go head to bed. I guess it'll be under quick saves, right? Because we just, uh... The game just like kind of quick saved itself. Oh no, I guess it wouldn't be under quick saves. The only time I ever did the lottery was like some scratch offs and I came out winning like winning like thirty more dollars than what I put in. And I was like, man, that's that's all the luck I have with this. And I stopped. <laughs> Gonna finish more in Yasha than Crash. So, I need to, um, I'm gonna skip all this because we already did that. Let me see. Let's choose the other option because, damn. Guess remove the bandages, which sounds like the worst thing ever, but remove it. That is a lot of money, though. 450 mil. Damn. 58 mil. Yeah, if she keeps kicking like that, this will be over before we know it. Alright then, sit tight. We'll get those bandages off. Calm down, lady. We're here to help. She should have heard every word Kishinuma was saying, but she didn't seem to be calming down in the slightest. With all the layers of bandages crisscrossing over her ears, maybe she couldn't understand us. Unable to see, unable to hear, and too frightened to scream, I think I'd squirm too if I were in her position, which is why I didn't want to go for the bandages. Damn it. This is really wrapped up tight. Okay. I think I got it. Can you see me? That that's what I'm doing. Watching speedruns. Straight up did the ocean hotel in three minutes. Someone told me you can speedrun that game in what, three hours or something? Calm down. You need to stop thrashing around like that. I know you're scared, lady. I'm trying to help you. Shit. You need to stay calm. Look at me. Did you smack her? She said, get a hold of yourself. Try not to panic. Take it slow. Deep breaths. Oh my god. 20, about like 30 minutes for a speed run of that game? Jesus. I can never do a speedrun. There you go. That's good. Everything's gonna be alright. Everything will be, Daijobu. We're working on set setting you free right now. Okay. Gradually, the girl began to calm down. I gently stroked her cheek, where I just slapped it. Tears were swelling- twi bleh. Tears were welling in both her- both our eyes. I closed mine and nodded my head. Good girl. You just need to hang in there a little longer. We'll have you out really soon. As long as you hold still, there's nothing to be afraid of. Okay. I'm alright now. I'll be right here by your side. Just try to keep positive. Kishinuma, would you mind pushing the statue a little so it doesn't fall off the shelf? Oh yeah, I'm on it. This is really wrapped tight. But there. I think that should do. Are you alright? Can you stand? Really? Just like that? They just tucked the bandages off completely? Really? There's no, like, fail-safe for the bucket to fall? So they just set up the bucket. They just totally set up that bucket, huh? No, not really. My knees are shaking too much. Well then, how about just sitting up for a bit? Give those knees some time to recover. 
I put my arms around her, and I only, uh, and only then did I realize that uh, what she meant. She was shaking from head to toe more violently than I ever felt before. She must have been frightened out of her mind. Yes, is there something you want? What is it? Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. That must have been really, really scary for you. But it's okay now. Everything is now Daijobu. I've never seen Suzumoto act so adult. I guess it's her maternal instincts kicking in. Women are amazing. Even with her constant, even with her constantly depending on Morishigi, I can totally see her turn to someone like Miss Yui when she gets older. Ah, yes. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, it's that girl from the, from the extras in the first game. The one who like, the one who helped the gentleman ghost find his hat and glasses or whatever the fuck. The sexy gentleman ghost. Thank you both so much for what you've done. You saved my life. Ah, uh, just glad to hear you all right. I never expected someone to tell me I saved their life, but I mean it, literally. That's for sure. My name is Nana... What the fuck? Nana Ogasawa... Ogasawa... Ogasawara? I guess that's how you pronounce it. I'm a 7th grader at... As Mis uh, Misigawa High? Nishigawa High. Fuck! There's a lot of, a lot of Japanese names. I'm Suzumoto. Nice to meet you. And this delinquent looking fellow is Yoshiki Kishinuma. Oh, come on. What kind of introduction is that? I think you've been hanging out with Morishigi too much. What is this? Really? <laughs> really? Fucking Twitch neck beard's not allowed? Come on. Come on. Neck beard is not allowed, Twitch? Stop being crazy, Twitch. I'm being cray cray. <laughs> I should turn off Automon. I forgot to do it last night. I'm gonna be honest. I was running a little bit late. Also today, I was running a little bit late. Fedoras are great. <laughs> Fedoras are great, but hipsters ruined it. Hard to believe you're a seventh grader, though. That means you're one year below uh, uh, below Satoshi's sister. Yeah, you're so much taller, and you seem so with it. I guess Yuka must be in the school somewhere, too. Huh. Wait. She's... He said one grade below? <laughs> but... 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 But Yuka is like a fucking little child mutant thing. She looked like she's like... Like seven or something. She looks like she's four, actually. I guess Yusa must be in the school somewhere, too, huh? I hope she didn't get herself separated from Mochita. Oh, she totally did. She's hanging out with a murderer. Ishinuma and Suzumoto. Are you two searching for your friends as well? Yeah, five friends from class. One homeroom TA and one classmate's little sister. We're not sure exactly what's going on in here just yet, but I guess they're trying to find us too. I see. I've been separated from my friends as well, and wound up the way you found me while I was looking for them. Yeah, what the hell kind of sicko did that to you anyways? I really don't know. I was just wandering around trying to find Nari and the others when someone reached out from behind me and covered my eyes. It was like some some weird ninja shit. The guy yelled, get over here. There was like a chain. A little bit of fire somewhere, I think, too. Whoever it was was incredibly strong. I really couldn't fight back. If I had to guess, I'd say it was probably a really big man. A really big man, huh? Any ideas, Suzumoto? Uh-uh. Well, I mean... The only living people I've met here so far is Kishinuma and this girl. Guess there's more to worry about in here than just lost souls and the ghost brat. Nana suddenly planted both arms firmly at her side, shrunk into, uh, shrunk into herself and began shaking again. She's probably thinking about what happened to her. She seems freaked out. I don't think we need to talk about the right right now, Kishinuma. Oh, sorry. Not sorry, but sorry. 
I think I'm gonna go take our new friend to the pool for a moment. Will you wait here? Will I wait here? Isn't the pool like all the way on the other side or something? Oh wait, no, actually I'm in the uh I'm in the locker rooms. Never mind. That's just right across from Okay, I guess. I guess, even though we really shouldn't be separated. Let's go. It's raining outside, so there's clean water, you know? Okay. Now wait just a minute. It's dangerous out there. If you're thirsty, you go gather some rainwater and bring it back for you. Wait. Right. We wait right here. Fuck you. You guys are gonna die. Fucking creature from the Black Lagoon's gonna jump out of the pool and grab you. Or worse, the goddamn dead man's float from like, are you afraid of the dark? Jump out of the pool and grab you. If anything happens, we'll call for you, I promise. Oh, those are famous last words. That's the last last time I heard that. People got fucked up. Alright already, just be careful, okay? Sorry about that. Kishino moves well. He's just a little dense. Oh, it's alright. I'm sorry too. To be such a bother. Oh no. It's no bother. If something as scary as it happens to me... Wait, what? If something as scary as that happened to me, I've done the same. But we're alone out here, so feel free to wash up as much as you need to. I'll look the other way if you like. Uh, yes. Please, if you would. Radio. Some creature's gonna jump out the water. I walked over to the hall, where the roof overhang offered some protection from the ring and waited for Nana to finish up. I'm a stone cold killer. I ain't never scared of nothing. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Taking this time to look around, I noted that the whole the whole building was surrounded by dense forest. Uh, theoretically, we could climb the fence here and leave. That's a bad idea. But we'd just be, we'd be, eh, but we'd just be trading a creepy dark school for a creepy dark woods. Could we survive out there? Will we actually be able to get home? The answer to that is no. I just want to find Shig. I'd be, uh, he'd be able to look at the situation coolly and rationally without, without, fl without flipping out and getting all emotional like me. That's a lie. That's a fucking bold faced lie. In the first game, the man's walking around taking pictures of dead bodies and going like, yeah, this is the shit. I just needed to find him, to see his face. I was starting to get teary-eyed again when I noticed Nana lazily running towards me. As she, as she neared, she, slow, uh, she slowed to walk. Was the water poison? Are you being possessed? Well, of course it's cold. It's raining out. And you're wet. Your body heat will dry you off in no time. We can spray on a little perfume, too. Where the fuck you get perfume from? We were both completely soaked from head to toe. But I was confident we'd dry off quickly enough once we got back inside the school building. And since I happened to have some travel fragrance in my pouch, I took it out of the sprit I took it out and spritz a little on and around Nana's skirt. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that would definitely help when the monster's chasing you and then he's like, what the fuck is that smell? And finds you hiding in like a locker or some shit. I think I know this scent. It's it's what the fuck? Rolts? Oilus? I don't even know how to pronounce that. Sunlight yellow, right? Sun sun sunlight yellow is what uh isn't that what uh what Joseph Joestar used? Not Joseph, Jonathan. Jonathan jo Joestar. Sunlight yellow overdrive. Bingo! It's my current favorite fragrance. <laughs> High school boy got six cans of Pontiac spray. Oh man, that's terrible in the locker room. Just people pulling out the axe spray and you're like, man, what are you doing? I got an extra bar of deodorant if you really need one. <laughs> Put that shit down. Damn. Yeah. I like it a lot too. My allowance is pretty small though, so I use a cheaper one right now. Well, once we make it out of here, I'll gladly share mine with you. Really? That's so kind of you. I'll make sure to wear some- Why are we sitting here talking about perfume? Fuck this. <laughs> wear some, uh, wear some uh, next drama club performance. It'll be my first time on stage, so I'm sure I'll need it. You're in drama club? 
Wow. I'm actually in our high school drama club myself. You are? I'll bet you're an actress. Well, I do act. But I also- I bet you are an actoire! Well, I do act, but I also write scripts and make costumes. We don't have a lot of members, but I don't mind. I love everything about stage drama. That's amazing. You can do all that? Nana. Oh. You don't mind if I call you by your first name, do you? Of course not. My voice just cracked. I'm a grown-ass man. My voice just cracked. <laughs> You're welcome to call me Mayu, too. Anyways, you really have an amazing figure. I'd love it if you'd let me make some clothes for you sometime. Oh, wow. Would you? Though, there are pretty much uh, slimmer girls out there that your talents would be better suited to. Like my old friend Nari. She's practically a jewel. She's so pretty. And my friend Chihaya is super cute. Like a princess. Well, let's just find those friends of yours and all go back home together. Kishinuma and I will be glad to help you in your search if you help us in ours. Sure thing, Maya. <laughs> Teehee. <laughs> Come on, let's head back in before we both catch colds. Things already too late for that. Oh, Hinana, I noticed you have some bruises on your thigh. Did something happen? Did you die in a past life? Like me? What? I didn't even know they were there. Maybe I got them when I was captured. I was pretty hysterical, so I don't have very clear memory anything of everything that happened. Well, you definitely didn't catch those during your capture because there was no bandages in that spot. Okay. Sorry to ask such an awkward question. You know, we're Japanese, so we notice imperfection quite quickly. Like, you have some nice skin, but, uh, what, what's that bruise there? What, what's that about? All done. About time. You two were out there for too long. I was starting to get worried. Well, a woman's beauty takes time to mold. Out in the rain, like a bunch of animals. Anyways, while we're out searching for Shig and the others, you mind if we also keep searching for Nana's friends? Of course, I don't mind. Let's find everybody who doesn't belong here and get the hell out. Get the fuck out of Dodge. You two ready to go? You bet. Search mode! That also means save mode, which I totally forgot the buttons. Was it F10? Was it F9? F9 is for menu. Shit. What was the quick save button? Was it F1? No, that's that. Well, one takes me to the main menu, so I'll just do that. There we go. Alright. Search mode. I forgot how to pull up the, uh... Huh. Some of the 10th level of discipline powers and... Huh. Sacrifice yourself so the Elder God can enter the war. That's interesting. Um... What? I forgot. Darkening? Oh, shit. We can get... Oh, my God. I never noticed that before. Oh, fuck. I have a darkening meter? That's not good. That's bad. That's real bad. Also, how do I enter the... Uh... There we go. It's the C button. Alright. So, I wonder if the ghost is still roaming the hall. Oh, darkening? So, in the first game, around the last chapter, you learn about something called the darkening, which... Um, depending on what, uh, first of all, depending on someone's a san uh, sanity state, and, um, like, their, uh, like, kind of like their, like, what their, where their limit is with their sanity, if they're in the school for too long, um, their mind basically seems to, like, it seems to, like, be influenced by the school itself, because the school itself is, like, a fucked up entity kind of like Silent Hill or some shit. And, um... And basically, they can enter something called the Darkening, which is basically the atmosphere just taking them over, making them not be themselves and bringing out the worst of them. To the point where someone literally, also, right here, in the menu where it says Darkening, that's our, like, piece of paper charm. That's kind of like our lifeline. 
So someone, <laughs> someone, uh, well, two people have the darkening that happens in the first game to the point where someone is holding on to someone's paper charm, which is like their lifeline, and they just burn it in front of them and stomp on it. And they're like, well, guess you're not getting out of here, bitch. So <laughs> the darkening is not good. It is not a good thing. We want to avoid that at all costs. I was wondering why my screen would like get red sometimes. So you can enter the darkening depending on how many, like if you, I guess if you look at like too many dead bodies or hear like too many fucked up stories or run into too many ghosts or something like that. I don't know. In the first game, it was kind of just like a plot line thing. In this game, it seems to be like an actual like mechanic. So this leads to the second floor, right? That leads to the second floor. I don't remember which doors were locked. I do have a key that I grabbed on the second floor, so I guess I can check somewhere over here. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to run into that fucking ghost boy, because I did kind of burn his ass away with a paper charm. And I don't have any charms left. Have I ever seen Event Horizon? No. <laughs> That's another movie I heard about. The door to the custodian closet is frozen. Okay, well, can't go in there. Can't go in there. What about 5A? It's frozen in place. Okay, so that one's locked up too. What about 4A? Oh, I can't, I can't even examine it. Do I just go in? I don't think I've been in 4A before. I don't get it. When Shinozaki and I came here before, this room was different. It's been like a week, so I don't remember what was different in this room. But, I'm not gonna look at that, because that will probably influence my darkening shit. A spaceship that has an experimental wormhole tech on it. Is that... Now, I'm not sure if I'm thinking about the same movie or not, because I haven't watched either. But is that the movie where... I've, I've heard some references to, like, a movie that's kind of like that. Where people seem to run into, like, this sort of area that they explore, some people uh, see their greatest fears or whatever. Is that the one that has like a fucked up bear or something that's like an amalgamation of people? Because I remember hearing a movie that was something like that. There's something all over, uh, <clears throat> there's something all over every one of these shells. It's like someone emptied out buckets full of small black beans. On a closer inspection, they seem to be dead flies, hundreds upon hundreds of them. Ugh, that's gross. All right, well. Don't remember that bit? Okay, so I guess that's a different movie. I remember hearing it in a podcast before. Someone talked about it. I can't remember what it was. I I don't remember what movie it was, but it sounded really interesting. It's partially decomposing corpse of a student. Judging by the size of the uniform, it's likely to be a male middle school student. Uh, middle school student. The back of his head seems to be completely smashed in, suggesting it was probably killed from behind with a blunt weapon. Like a hammer. Okay. Now, I want to see, does that affect my... It does. Okay, so looking at the dead bodies definitely affects my darkening level. So, dead bodies are a no-no. Not doing that. You get name tags out of them, but... It... I guess the more name tags you get, the more, uh, like, extra content you can view. But it is definitely not worth, worth getting myself killed. Maybe I can head to the second wing. Just don't run to that ghost boy. It scared the shit out of me last time. Never thought I would get terrified by a fucking... Oh, what's going on here? Hey, Kishinuma, what's that? I can't really make it out very well, but something down there is definitely reflecting light. 
I wonder if we can get it. I seriously doubt it. This all looks... Mm. This whole looks like it doesn't... I can't fucking... I'm, I'm having like a hiccup right now. This whole looks like it doesn't bottom out for a while. There could be a whole storage house down there. Maybe if we had some kind of ladder or rope. Let's assume for ladder. I, I'd rather not have a rope. Or we can just, you know, if we can find like one of those little grabby claw things, that'll be nice. Oh, this is blocked off. Okay, so we can't go to the second wing. Well, I guess we can head to the second floor then. Definitely not heading towards the exit room. Ghost Boy might be hanging in there. Alright. Well, let me... Can I not look around here? Alright. Guess I'm looking for a ladder. I think I'll be more likely to find a ladder hanging around instead of a rope. Let's see. Nothing over here, really. I'm telling you, one of these times I'm gonna, like, look to my side and there's just gonna be, like, a pop-up. Like it's fucking Five Nights at Freddy's or some shit. It's gonna scare the shit out of me. The door seemed to be frozen in place. Damn it. Wasn't this door open before? There was also an earthquake, so maybe this area has opened up. Maybe I can head into the lab room, finally. Let's see. Now you really gotta look, cause last time there was like a wooden plank on the floor that was like super blend in in the background. All right, well. Let's see. All right, this doesn't seem to be blocked off, so hide inside two A. Let's see. Nothing in here. Nothing in here. Alright. 3A. That is the dead body I covered. The ghost helped us out there. This is the ghost that gave me the paper charm that I burnt that ghost boy with. Alright, guess I can head to the lab room then, right? I have that key, haven't used it yet. Lab door open? Science lab door is locked up tight. Fuck, man, are you serious? Really? Door's locked up tight. Maybe the key we found will work here. I hope so. Use the rusty key. Sure, why not? No good. Guess it's the wrong lock. Damn it. Not going to the nurse's office, because Mayu doesn't want to go in there. There's two accesses to the third floor. I think I went this... I don't think I went this way before, actually. I remember going to the third floor before, but I'm not sure if this is the pathway I took. Let's see. No, this is a different pathway. completely boarded up. It won't be possible to get inside. Alright, what about the girls' room? Maybe there's a ladder in here or something? Get the- dog. Uh, no! Smoking in the boys' room. I remember, uh... I remember, uh... At the at the end of my high school, I went to like night school because I worked uh, I worked in the day, 
And I remember we weren't able to go to the bathroom no more because uh, someone got caught smoking in there, which is like, come on, man. Night school only lasts for like four hours. You couldn't wait four hours? My man's sitting here talking about kill, kill, kill. The fuck out of here. Transition from private school. Someone set the boys from a fire. Uh, before I went to night school, I had like a tech, a, a tech class that I would go to. And there was constantly these three guys, like, now... I was somewhat cool with them, and like, cool with them where it's like, it's fine, I'll hang out with them or whatever, but... They wouldn't be the first group of people I would hang out with. But they just love taking, like, pieces of paper and the soldering iron and just fucking... And just like, setting shit on fire, and it would set ablaze and they would just stomp it out before the teacher could even like, turn her back and see them. And I'm like, one of these days, you're going to set off the alarm, and it's going to be a whole shit show. They didn't, but they definitely got caught for setting shit on fire. Yeah, that's fucking smart. Oh my god. Oh no, bad spirits. Don't talk to them. Don't talk to the bad spirits. They're going to make me... They're going to hurt me. Wrong button. That's the wrong button. It's not F1. It's 1. F1 is to check your inventory. There we go. Want to see what they gotta say? Well, <laughs> that's why I saved the game. Some of them may hurt you. I'm just assuming because they're red. I'm Yeah, I'm assuming because they're red. And the reason for that is because the first game told me that blue guys are good, red guys are bad. And there were situations where the red guys would actually hurt me. I know she'll accept me. She has to. I want that body. I want it. I think I think you might want to like talk to a girl first before you, you know, make friends with her. Find out some common interest. Maybe take her out to eat. If she accepts the offer, pay for the bill. If she wants to split it, that's fine. You know, I don't think you just I don't think that's how you go about that. I did not mean to press that. Well, the spirits are looking at me. They totally want to possess me. Does that affect my darkening? Talking to these spirits? No, it doesn't. No, it does not. Alright. Still have your own bodies? Okay. <laughs> Fucking, I'll allow that. Why not? Every time I click off the game, it tells me no. It tells me bad. There we go. Don't talk to me. They scare the fuck out of me too, man. I'm afraid you won't be going any further. Oh. See, that's the most menacing one that he had to say. Alright, well, I'm getting the fuck out of Dodge. <laughs> Twitch is going to be watching you. <laughs> They're going to put you on a list. Men in Black is going to roll up to your house. They're going to be like, how do you feel about this now? I guess I can go to the nurse's room. I mean, Mayu says she didn't want to go to the nurse's room, but now, now I got a fucking posse with me. Maybe the nurse's room won't be bad, right? George the infirmary is frozen. Well, fuck. I can go down these steps. It's a different pair of steps than when I came from. Um, oh no, that's blocked off. Oh shit, well. Oof. Head back upstairs. They're gonna neutralize. <laughs> Neutralize you for calling someone a simp. Yeah, that's pretty much how I think it will go. Let me head. Th oh wait, let me not head this way. Shit. How do I stop it? How do I cancel that? Can I cancel that? Nope, I can't. I want to try heading back upstairs and like maybe check out one of the corners. Like maybe over here. Maybe there's like a ladder tucked in a corner somewhere.
like I see what they're trying to do for this game like they're, they're trying to pull it like a I believe this like this definitely came out before like actually when did Danganronpa trigger uh, you know Happy Trigger Havoc come out because I think that was a PSP game in um Japan before it came out to the West so it might have came out around the same time I'm not sure but maybe they're trying to do something like that in this game. But in Danganronpa, the first one, you walk around the school in first person. You don't, like, you don't have, like, you have a search mode, but you physically walk around the school yourself, like, head upstairs and everything like that in first person, run across the characters. You don't transition from, like, screen to screen. So it's definitely more difficult to, like, look for things over here. Where the fuck? And it gets to the point where I'm just gonna have to... Dang Rampa is both the best and the worst <laughs> of anime in general. Oh, she's my favorite too. Can... Here's the thing. Try not to spoil Dang Rampa in the chat for anyone who might end up watching the VODs. Also, for me, don't spoil Danganronpa V3. I have had that game since it came out. I have yet to play it because I was going to record it and then I didn't. I never had time to record it. So. And I want to get like a thumbnail and everything made for it, which I, I already have an idea for that. It's just that I have yet to request, request it yet because I'm not ready. The, the only thing in V3 that I have played, and it was because I, I did record it, but then I, I got, I recorded it, but that was before my old PC like crashed and burned and I lost all those files. Um, I only played the first, like the first case that happens, which sucks because it sucks that I played it because now people aren't going to be able to see my first reaction to that which is like such a good fucking way to start that game and they can never do it again ever they can never do what they did again ever or it would come as it would come off as kind of like lame and just like rinse and repeat oh really well I'm um, I'm happy to uh, assist in that matter. Quick question, because I am, because spoiler, you know, spoilers, I'm against it just for, both for me and other people. Hints are fine. Where the fuck do I find a ladder and or rope? <laughs> that's course part on Wednesday morning. Well, now they're going to be, a, now since Batman is done, that's going to be moved over. So, next time I stream Quartz Party, it's probably going to be Sunday? Sunday morning? For the East Coast, Sunday morning. Um, For the West Coast, uh, Friday, uh, not Friday. Saturday night. Because uh, Batman's not in the way, so we can just focus on um, Ghost of Tsushima, Quartz Party, and... And, um... What's the other one? Vi Vampire. Which is tomorrow night. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow night, whatever the hell. I really don't know where the... Does anyone know where, like, a rope or a ladder is for me to get that shiny object at? Because I don't want to... I don't want to sit here and... Like, check the hallway individually. That'll take some time. Maybe it's in the pool room. Maybe it's in, like, the corner of the pool room somewhere. I'll try checking the classrooms again. Can't head upstairs on this side because there's the ghost blocking the way. Oh, what's going on in here? Why'd the music stop? Why'd the music stop? 
this game. Oh. That was not there before. That was not there before. Oh, I only get 13. Okay, I thought they only gave me like 13 slaves. Uh, slave? Save spots. Damn. All right, mouse, calm down. Shit. Let me check the dead body. It was most likely a female junior or senior high student. Though, anything beyond that was impossible to determine, as everything above the waist was missing. Whoever killed- Well, I mean, without being fresh, if you really wanted to know the gender, you can use the waist for that. Whoever killed this girl must- Okay, well, it's a girl. There you go. Whoever killed this girl must have been d done recently and wounded- eh. As the wound, as the wound was still fresh and the blood all over the floor was still wet, her exposed intestines seemed to have been pulled out of her body and draped onto the floor, where they were then crushed flat like a worm under a big shoe. So here's my question of this, right? Japan's really freaky about like decapitations and shit. That's why, like in Resident Evil Four, in the Japan version, it's like cut out because I believe it's illegal to show decapitations. But this is fine. Japan's fine with this. <laughs> They're like, whatever, man. It's not a head, it's a torso, whatever. This uniform is from my school. No. Who is this? I don't know. I guess one of your friends uh, bit the bullet. Damn. Certainly will get a leg up in the situation. <laughs> Just laying around. It's okay, Nana. Try to stay calm. It's okay. Your friend might be dead. But it's okay. Everything's Daijobu. Yeah, try not to think of the worst case scenario. There's no reason to assume this is one of your friends. I don't know if there is there a name tag laying around. Nana was wrought with grief. She was shaking uncontrollably to such an extent that her teeth were chattering. We gently laid her out of uh, lead, laid, let her out of the classroom. I wanted to get out of there myself, to be honest. Seeing a human body so horribly mutilated was more than I could handle. Man, just get your boy Morishigi up in here. He'd be good with it. He's like, man, that's some good shit. You take some pictures of that. Fucking creep. Alright, well. I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm just gonna check. I'm pretty sure. Yep, 4%. Darkening's gonna take me. It's gonna fuck me up. Alright, well, I guess I can check the locker room again. I don't want to head to the, uh, the front entrance because the ghost boy might still be there and I don't have my, uh... Oh, can I use this? The gauze bandages use tie-up Nana. Maybe we can use this as a makeshift rope. I don't think that would help, but why not? Fuck it. Gathered up loose bandages and handed them to Kishinuma. Kishinuma then obediently pulled them and taught in a few uh pulled them and taught in a few places to test their their I can't even fucking read them. God. The tensile strength. They're definitely enough here to work with. And as long as we fold it over enough times, I don't think there'll be any risk of tearing. <laughs> Famous last words. There are two strips, too. We can probably twist them together, and, and the end result would be a, as sturdy as a real rope. And so we folded both strips of gauze in half, then twisted the two uh, doubly strap doubly. Yeah, doubly strapped together to form something that resembled a braid. I don't... Uh, damn. <clears throat> I'd done something similar to this once before, when making rope light decorations with theater costumes, so it didn't prove to be any particular difference. It almost felt that rope making 101, 10 minutes. Time pronto. We had to do it ourselves. Do it yourself rope in our cans. Granted, it was pretty flimsy compared to the resin ropes you might buy at home at a home center. But it seemed like it would hold on a person's weight just fine. Hopefully. Hopefully it works. Or someone's gonna get fucked up today. Someone's gonna get killed. I'm gonna instead of scrolling all the way down all the time. I'm gonna overwrite these. 
There we go. Someone's definitely gonna die. Someone already died today. I already fucked up. Alright, who's willing to risk their lives? Get on my face, mouse. With our handy dandy rope, with our handy dandy notebook. With our handy dandy rope, one of us should be able to get down to the hole and fish out whatever the whatever's that glistening thing is. Yeah. Glistening, glinting, I can't read. Maybe. But there's nothing to tie the rope onto. Well someone's gonna have to fucking hold it then. Kishinuma? Who died? Nana. She died. Because I thought it would be best to grab the bucket first. Oops, there was soap on the bucket handle. Oopsie daisy. And then she got nailed in the face, literally, with nails and scissors. And all types of sharp objects, like razors. Maybe, but there's nothing to uh, there's nothing to tie the rope to on this end. Also, Seiko died in the first chapter. So I think somebody up here is going to have to hold on to it. If Nana and I work together, we should be able to... If, if the two smallest in the group... Uh, with our force combined, we should be able to hold up the man that's twice our size. <laughs> so you already decided that I'm the one who's going, huh? Man, in the first game, Kishinuma was MVP. He did everything. Satoshi only did one thing, because he's the quote-unquote main character. Would the two of us really be able to hold him, though? Wouldn't it be better if the boy to hold the rope and one of us girls to get the object? I don't know if I could do it, honestly. I'm not very good at, sort, at sports and anything. Even if I made it down, I'm not sure I could climb back up. Someone's gonna fucking die. Then how about I go? I mean, you seem to be familiar with these bandages since they were tied to you a moment ago, so yeah, sounds like a good idea. Mayu already seemed to have proven herself to be able to, uh... Actually, you know what? No, I, it was Kishinuma that held her up. Never mind. You were just bound with these bandages not too long ago and almost died. Would you really want to have them tied around your body again? I should be fine. I'll do whatever I have to if it means I can see Nari and the others again. I can relate. I'll do whatever I have to in order to see Shig again. That creepy boy. You're very brave, Nana. Especially for how young you are. It's kind of incredible. I still can't believe they're telling me that she's younger than than Yuka. Meanwhile, Yuka was like this little mutant child in the first game. Shig, everyone's always been everyone's always bent over backwards to help me. From Shig's point of view, I must really seem like a helpless child sometimes. But just this once, I want to be a reliable one. I want to protect Nana and lead her home safely. I don't I don't really mind either way, honestly. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. You see about that. <laughs> you see about that. You see about. I don't think sending Yoshiki would be a good idea. I don't think sending Yoshiki would be a good idea. But what do I know about good ideas? Because I got Nana killed. Okay, that should do it. Isn't it a bit tight? It's hurting my stomach. Oh. Oh, not the stomach. No. Not the spot where you got that splatter mark at. Oh, no. That's your death mark. Better than slipping out and falling, isn't it? I don't know, man. You might have sealed my fate just now. Alright, lower me down slowly. Please be careful, Maya. Oh yeah, I highly doubt that I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking die. I tie some knots at regular intervals to help make it easier for you to climb back up. That sounds great. Thanks, Nana. I'm gonna get so fucked. I'm so he's gonna it's gonna slip out of his hand. I'm gonna go splat on the ground just like I went splat on the wall in the first game. And there we go. I made it. Everything seems daijobu down here, man. It's kind of dark and spooky. Really nasty smell. It's a bunch of fucking dead bodies down here and shit. 
They all look like me from the first game. Splattered. <laughs> Everywhere. It was too dark to see my surroundings clearly, but I could instantly sense an oppression, an oppressive atmosphere all around me. This was not a good place to be. Oh, you think? I'm pretty sure this is what every Mario game looks like. If you look down the bottomless pits. Oh, all the darkening is so gonna get me. Now we're looking for an object that was shimmering in here. One body definitely stands out. Oh shit. Are those guys dead? Yup, they're all dead. They're all dead. Is this intestines or rope? It's not the time to be napping, you should wake up. Now I'm pretty sure this is made for me to check every single one of them so the darkening can get my ass. Where's the shiny thing that was down here? Okay, well I'm guessing you have it then. Maybe, maybe she is alive. There's a large number of dead bodies scattered throughout the room. Most seem to have died long ago, having decayed proper skeletons, but a small handful seem fresh, as if they were alive only yesterday. Here too, huh? Oh, fuck. What am I looking for? I'm definitely not trying to look at all the dead bodies. Can't check the bucket. There was something that was, like, glitter glistening down here. Something shiny. I don't see anything. How am I... How's my darkening looking? 35, it went up 1%. God damn it. Fuck. Mr. Bones, you got anything for me? Large number of dead bodies. I guess I can tell them to hoist me up? No? Something's gonna jump out and scare me. I feel it. Is this Spike Spiegel down here? Nothing over here. I guess we check the pool. Large number of dead bodies. Huh. Forgot about the darkening. Yeah, darkening seems like it's an actual feature in this game rather than a story thing in the first game. I'm trying to look at like every individual piece down here because they did that shit earlier when I had to find like a piece of wood. How's my darkening doing? 40%. Oh, fuck me. Yeah, this is just made for you to panic and die. It's a bunch of intestines down here. Is there nothing up here? Shouldn't there be something on the wall? Can I not check this? This wall seems to be a different color. Oh, wait, that's just the side. Just came into the dark side. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Fucking Palpatine looking at Anakin about to slice Count Dooku in half. He's just like, Do it. And Anakin goes, What? <laughs> He's like, What? You serious? Do it. Kill him. And even Dooku was like, What? You serious? I knew the Sith kill each other, but goddamn. I can't. I really. I really don't know what to look for down here. Maybe I have to check this body again? Okay, it's a girl's body. This one of the ones that seems a little bit more recent in death. So recent, in fact, still hints of bodies of Heater. All the fingers have been. Oh, look at my screen. Oh, my screen is going stupid. The darkening is coming over me. And her tongue seems to have been removed as well. Her student ID tag is clearly displayed on her jacket. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Damn, bro, your friend's dead down here. <laughs> this is the same school leader format as Wynana wears. And when we rescued her, she called out several names. Oh, uh, wasn't one of them Hikari? I don't think I can bring myself to tell Nana about this. Oh, you may not, but I will. I bet your friend's fucking dead. There's something on the ground next to Hikari's body reflecting a little light down here. Is this what we saw from above? Small glass bottle. Just like Legend of Zelda, it's the most powerful item in the game. wonder what this is. Looks like it could be water. Having acquired the item we sought, not wanting to stay down here in this hole. So I'm guessing if I were to send a... Okay. Kishinuma, I got it. 
Now pull me up, Kishimoto. Get me the fuck out of here. Do, do you want me to... Yeah. It's not even 10 meters deep down here. I can climb it. You can climb it? The fuck? No, pull me back up. You can climb it. Almost there. Grab my hand. Ooh. How am I looking? 42. Damn. Ooh. It's okay. It's okay. Just don't go crazy. That's all you gotta do. Just don't go crazy. Just go to your happy place. Everything will be fine. Nice job on climbing out of there. Wait, would it be? Are you saying would it be cool to jump into the video game and witness it like like I'm the character? Fuck no. I mean, if that was a superpower, then I would play every fucking hentai game imaginable. No duh. I'm so beat though. I didn't seem it didn't seem that high, but my arms and legs are terribly are terribly are trembling right now. I'll definitely be feeling this tomorrow. Not in the game, but in. Not in this game, but in other games, yeah, okay. Well then, yeah. I would play every hentai game known to man. <laughs> well, you did good. So what did you end up finding? And maybe I'll play something like Hades. Hades is pretty cool. You know, ex except for the part where it's a roguelike, so he dies all the time. Man, you run into Dionysus in that game, and he's all like, he's all like, hey, what, what's the name of Hades' child in that game? I forgot. I forgot the main character's name. He was like, hey, man. Like, the first thing he says to you, he's like, hey, man, nice cock. And I'm like, what the fuck? I like this guy. He's cool. The fucking god of parties. The heck is that? Sake? It doesn't smell or anything. I think it's just water. Oh, no. That's holy water. Oh. Oh, she recognized it. Oh. Uh oh, no, that's bad. Holy water. My friend Hikari had a bottle just like it. This kind of protective charm supposedly infused with the power of famous spiritual medium. Mm. It has the ability to ward off evil. Some people believe it grants luck with money or love when kept in your bag. Mm. You sure about that? Sounds pretty sketchy to me. Oh, oh fucking. Reality has showed that it is pretty sketchy. No, it's totally legit. It's been endorsed by the spirit medium who appears on TV. Well, that explains everything, huh? Sainoki? Oh yeah, her. I guess she said it's the real deal, then it's possible. There may be something to it. You heard of her, Kishinuma? I'm a little surprised by that, I have to admit. Is this something you can buy? You can get it online, but in Hikaru's case, her dad works from the TV station and got the bottle directly from Naho. Okay. Do you think this could be Hikari's bottle? Don't tell me Hikari's down there. Listen. I'll neither confirm nor deny that uh, your friend is down there. I mean... Oh, look at that red screen. Oh, it's like the darkening's coming. I'm coming for you. I'm going to make you super evil. I don't know. Maybe someone else is. Or maybe Hikari dropped her bottle down the hole. Shinozaki's really into stuff like this. There's probably a lot of girls who bought these. Yeah, you're probably right. Or am I? Or am I? Or am I right? I'm right about one thing. Fuck it. It's a protective charm said to give good luck. Oh yeah, I bet. I bet she has some really great luck with that shit. Okay, well. What the fuck am I gonna use holy water on? Oh, wait. Tom to burn some fucking red spirits. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm 
I'm gonna be like fucking Uncle Ruckus in Boondocks. Get your black ass back to hell! I'm like, come on. Steak Mina in the bed, just fucking freaking out. Stank Mina's the best. It's the best of them docs. I love it. Break it on, you fucking ghost. I ain't afraid of no ghost. Splash you with this water. Take a fucking shower. Damn it all. This look like they'll be letting us through too easily. Shame these aren't real flames, or we can just douse them with water. Oh. How about we try using holy water? It was recommended by a spiritual medium after all. Fucking fuck them up. Take this, bitch. This is definitely the one I'm gonna need to save me from a ghost. It's hot! Burns like acid! What the fuck did you throw on me? Damn you all, you're still alive. Isn't that enough? Nope, I, I wanna survive. May death soon come for you too. Oh, trust me, I just sealed my death. I already know it. It's gonna be like one of those moments where something's gonna grab me and they're gonna be like, man, if only you didn't use that holy water, you can save yourself. With this, one of the red spirit flames flew directly at me. It was clearly meant as a hostile action. <laughs> oh, shit. What happened? Ishinuma quickly leaped in front of him, hands out to take full brunt of the spirit's attacks in my place. Then all three flames simply, uh, simply disappeared. <laughs> you okay, man? They're possessing him. They're inside his body. <laughs> take it easy. I'm fine. I just burned my hand a little, that's all. Oh, no, they're inside of you, buddy. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Should have been paying closer attention. Got some, got some stick-on bandages in my bag somewhere. What? What's wrong? Oh, nothing. Here you go. Kishinuma, just, just drink this bottle of holy water. You'll be fine. Oh, please allow me. Show me where you got the burn. Thanks a bunch. And Suzumoto, seriously, what's wrong? Nothing, you just got a demon sticking out of your neck. Well, I seem to have lost my student ID. Probably dropped it when I climbed down into that hole. Is my... Is my piece of paper with it? Isn't that it in your hand? Oh. Oh. Am I holding someone else's ID? No, this belongs to the deceased girl in the school entranceway. I picked it up earlier. I held up the student's ID so Kishinuma could get... So uh, Kishinuma could get a better look at it. It was clear from its... It was clear from his design alone, after all, that it wasn't Kizuragi. I probably should have just left it there, but, well, I was all alone and scared, and I thought maybe I learned something useful from it, you know? No, I think that's perfectly reasonable. You gotta do whatever it takes to reunite with everyone and get the hell out of this school. Mind if I take a look at it? Sure. I don't think you'll find anything too helpful in it, though. Hmm, some kind of doodle on this page. It's a box. I wonder what it means. The memo page Kishinuma opened was ring was ringed with blood, sticky fingerprints, bloody sticky fingerprints. Oh. And centered among them was a rough sketch of the box drawn in a ballpoint pen, along with numerous lines of text written in roughly shaky letters. They seem to have been written with an excessive amount of force resulting in countless black splotches and small tears on the paper. I think Ayaka is going to kill Ayo. I need to hide her. Ayo is mine, and mine alone. She must be protected. I must Mamoru her. If I hide it in the box, no one will ever find it. Ayo, I love you so much. These words were written over and over again, with the ink getting blotchier and more haphazard each time. This man got affected by the darkening. Doesn't the box in the picture look an awfully lot like this one? I mean, I know we found it pretty far from the entranceway, but still. You're right. 
It really does. Isn't this a keyhole? I didn't use the rusty key yet, did I? Oh yeah, you're right. I wonder if... Maybe that key I found will fit in the lock. And then like a fucking... Like a spring trap, like a knife just sticks out. Kills me. Kishin, uh, Kishinuma and Nana were both watching me ex uh, at the, expectantly as I produced the rusty key from my bag. I inserted it into the lock. It fit. Crossing my fingers, I began turning. It met with no resistance at all. It was the right key. The lid popped open and nostalgic music started to play. It's a music box. I had no idea. Didn't I say this was a music box when I picked it up? Pretty sure I said that. I think I heard this song somewhere before. It sounds like the intro to the game. Oh, I miss you so. More than you know. Tell me where, oh where did you go? This is so not the time or place for karaoke. Sorry about that. Just trying to lighten the mood, jackass. Just got attacked by ghosts. Yishinoma took the music box from my hands with a sort of dissertive smile on his face. So something inside this thing then, right? No good. It's too tight to squeeze. My fingers won't fit. My fucking fat sausage fingers. Try turning it upside down and shaking it. Like a baby. Oh, something came out. But it's another key? Another key, huh? Who hides a key behind a lock? Someone who really wants something else locked. But this means we can probably open some door now we previously couldn't. Like the lab room. Did I go into the lab room before? No, I didn't. The key that I had didn't work. I placed the key in my pocket for safekeeping. And I tried in vain to, rem to remind myself that I shouldn't get my hopes up. But in truth, I was downright thrilled. We were making actual progress. Oh, that's fine, man. If you gotta go to bed, head to bed. I need your rest. Or knows that I don't get enough rest. My darkening ass 47. Damn. Damn. That is a... Why is that the save icon? Ooh, that does not look good. Alright. Moving on. I'm gonna head to the lab. Alright, lab door, open up. Doors locked tight. Never mind, lab doors, stay closed. Uh, we couldn't, we weren't able to go to the Stodian's room before. Take a sip of my water. Gotta wet the old whistle. Ref room. Oh shit, wrong button. Wait, the ref room's not where I want to go. Where I want to go is on the first floor, I believe. So let me go and do that. Let me see. I'm assuming that I totally killed that ghost boy that was after me. Because I've just been going everywhere now. Here we go. I think that's where I want to go. It's the only place I can think of right now. Unless there's the classroom upstairs, but I'm pretty sure I went in there already. Open says, oh, I can look through the window. The trapdoor seems to have completely vanished without a trace. 
is as if it never existed. Oh, the one that uh, Kishinuma was at. Oh wait, so this is where I got the music box from. Okay. What about 5A? Doors locked, frozen in place. Alright, well then... Our other option is... Uh, the classroom upstairs. It's the only other place that's locked right now. The nurse's office is also locked, but... I think that just has to do with some ghost fuckery. One B. If it's not one B, then I'll try the nurse's room. Open up. Door's frozen. Alright, well, definitely not that then. The nurse's room is the only other. It's the only other room that we have left. We can we can go everywhere else. Door's locked. Huh. Well, where else can I go? Like, the boys' room is boarded up. There's no key for that. And this just leads... to a dead end. Huh. Is there, like, a secret doorway or something that I just never noticed? I mean, there are doorways that are, like, inside the classrooms for, like, closets and stuff, but I weren't- I wasn't able to, like, examine them for the most part, so... Must got a good feeling about this. Let's try the music box key here. Didn't I check this already? I don't think I checked it. I think I just came up here and I said no. Try the key. Key turned easily and the lock the door came right open. Oh, so I just didn't check it. I just came up here and I said no. Oh! Not gonna lie, she kind of scared me a little bit. Okay. There was a dead body propped against the inside of it. As the door slid open, it spilled out into the hallway. Kishinuma completely ignored this, however, stepping over it and darting into the room as fast as he could, legs as fast as his legs would carry him. Shirozaki! Damn girl, you still possessed? Within the pale darkness of the room, a figure stood in front of one of the shelves, completely engrossed in some ancient looking tome with Shinozaki. The floor around her was piled high with books, she seemingly read and discarded, strange coming from a from a bibliophile. Really, that's a term. Usually won't even who usually won't even crease the spine. The carve on the other side... <clears throat> the carve on the other side causes the turnover on the nice ball, on nice ball joints that look the floor. What the fuck? What are you saying? Shinozaki, get a hold of yourself. Damn. Damn, girl, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm uncultured. I'll try better next time. <laughs> Shinozaki, that's enough. You can stop this now. This isn't you. You're in pain, right? Whoever's lost soul is in control, Shinozaki. I'm calling out. Get the hell out of her right now this instant. Oh, shit. It's a dude. Of course it has to be a dude. Not a chance. I'm much better at using her than both of you combined. Oh my god, it's more than one dude. Oh shit. <laughs> that one scared me. Dude, that's like in the that's in like the left back of my headphones. 
Like, it's all the way in the back of my, only my left headphone. It scared the shit out of me. That is, that's some good sound design. Give us to us, please. If we save you, we'll help you get out of the school alive in exchange. Fuck no. My man, you see the work Kishinuma put in in the first game for this girl? This girl's also crazy as fuck too. You're not having, you're not having Shinazaki. Shut up, selfish bastards. Look, I sympathize with you, I really do. Dying in here must be like, must be a never-ending nightmare. But who does, but how does that give you the right to use Shinozaki like she's some kind of tool? She's a living being with her own mind. Oh, ye of shroud mind, ye of shroud? Ye of sound mind? We're in pain, we're in agony. You're cold and hungry and mad, but you, you're still blessed with life. Don't you understand? I don't give a shit about any of that. All I know is, all I know is that you can't have Shinozaki. I'll never ever let you take her. Hell is this ringing in my ears. The way they're doing... <laughs> The way they're doing the sound in this game, oh my god, it's really like... Jesus. From there, Ayumi took a sudden turn for the worse. Tossing aside the book she was reading, she began punching herself in the head with both hands. Oh shit. So quiet in here, too. But just look what colors have been let in now. Silver? Green, maybe? Stop this, Shinozaki. Ah, it was yellow. Shinozaki? Brother, is that you? You're late. I'm so hungry. It's been so very long since my last meal. Oh, she's gonna... No. No, make sure she's not holding no knives or anything. Hina sealed me up in here, you see? And I haven't eaten a single thing since then. Not a single bite. Nothing at all. Get the fuck out of my left ear! <laughs> Jesus! Brother, you look so del- oh god. Is it strange? Is it strange that I want to kill you? Taste your succulent flesh. Get the f It's going in the right ear, it's going in the left ear, it's really, really in there. It's, un it's uncomfortable ASMR shit right now. Cut it out, Shinozaki. I'm not your brother, for starters. Are you still holding on to the ID? The... If you're holding on to the ID, then I can understand why she's going crazy. Welcome home, brother. Miki? You... Uh, here again? You know, your selfish little sister drops by just to make you dinner, and that's how you greet her? You've been eating your meals every day, brother? More or less, yeah. Some prepackaged con convenience store food here, a school lunch there. Just as I feared, then. Keep, li keep it like that, and your health is deteriorating in no time. Well, you sit tight. I'll make you a fine meal right now. Whatever you would do, whatever would you do without me? Maybe live freely. How's school going? I hear you've been hanging out with a boy named Mochida and a girl named Shanazaki. What kind of people are they? Everything's gonna be okay. It will be Daijobu. They'll come around one of these days. Just be patient, okay, brother? Oh! Is she cutting you? What's going on? Oh god, she's biting his neck. I gotta stop her. Oh shit! That is... That is uncomfortable. Kishinuma! The two of us made a mad dash towards Kishinuma, intending to pry Ayumi away from him though, uh, through any means possible. But to my astonishment, he met our panic gaze with a stern, let me handle this look, reinforcing the message by raising his hand in stop motion. 
Shinazaki. Whoa, I didn't expect that. Kind of freaky dicky shit they're into. Circumstances were different. This could be the start of a real heartwarming romantic scene. Kishinuma grabbed Shinazaki and hugged her tightly. Shinazaki, come back to me, please. You aren't any of these people. You're Ayumi Shinazaki, damn it! So warm. Bit by bit, I can see the expression on Shinazaki's face change. Her crazy, possessed snare gradually gave way to a blank daze. Blake stands uh, constant stance. What the fuck? Content. Ugh. Can't say the word. Counting stance. Counting. Counting. I can't even. I'm not even gonna try. That then slowly but surely began sparking with life once more. And though it was nearly, nearly imperceptible. Yeah, that's the word. Percept nearly imperceptible. I could swear I saw a smile start to form from her lips, and then she bit down super hard. It's a trap, Kishinuma. Don't trust her. For a few long moments, Shinazaki stared into Kishinuma's eyes, and then in an instant of realization, her face turned beet red. I recall the phase, oh crap, drifting through my head for a split second, and then... <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Ow. I felt that one. What are you trying to pull here, pervert? Get away from me. Shinozaki, I think you should be the last one calling me a pervert. You just chowed down on my neck like it was a fucking prime rib. I mean, I, I mean, I do got some meat on my bones. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with you? Shinozaki, you had me really worried there. But well, I'm glad you're back. Kishinuma, you all right? Suzumoto, what are you? Wait, where am I? You're some, you're into some real freaky shit, Shinozaki. Shinozaki, what does one say in this situation? Welcome back, I guess. Huh? What's going on? Wow, I have to admit, this all sounds really unlikely, even to me. I guess I have been under the influence of this building for for quite a while, though. She's been fully consumed by the darkening. Yeah, and I let you, and let me tell you, you were getting pretty violent there. How'd you get in there? How'd you get in here, anyways? This room's been locked since we showed up. I got no idea. But then, we are in a building that can change its layout at will. I guess pretty much anything is fair game in these closed spaces. It almost feels like this school takes pleasure in making it the most unlikely events happen at random. I suppose we were dealing with the supernatural. We we're already dealing with something that's scientific, that's scientifically unlikely. So best not rely on logic. You're starting to go over my head here. It almost sounds like I'm talking to your sister. Well then, let's just put it this way. There's no way of knowing what's going to happen in this school. Unless you, uh, live the events already, and you're in some kind of time loop, but... I mean, what's the likelihood of that, right? So listen carefully. There are exactly three objectives in here. First, we need to look into the reason why this place is the way it is. Specifically, we need to find out more about the beings who control it. Then, we need to interact with those beings and try to dig up some means of getting out of here alive. And finally, once we figure that out, we need to actually make it happen. That's pretty much it. Wow. You're in full class rep mode right now. Yep, she sure is. But aren't you forgetting the most important objective, Shinazaki? Uh-huh. I think she is. Finding all her friends safe and sound. Oh, yeah. Good point. That should be our first step, for sure. Once we find Miss Yui, Moshida, and the others, 
Then we can work on. Uh, then we can work on the rest. Damn straight. At Ogosawara's, uh, I can't even say her name. Ogosawara's friends to the mix, and we'll be we'll be many strong. Then nothing can stop us, right? Hi. Right. Oh, her friends fucking dead. Both her friends are gone. Let's not get too careless, though. None of this is gonna be easy. There's only so much we can do down here, and that's not likely to change. For now, I suggest we investigate our surroundings as thoroughly as possible. Leave no stone unturned. I don't give up or give in, no matter what. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm scared to death right now. But I'm not gonna let that stop me. Oh yeah? Oh yeah? I played the first game, that stopped you a million of times. Don't worry, we'll all be right, we'll be behind you all the way. And we can get through this together. Everything will turn out Daijobu. At this, Kishinuma stood up and began scanning his eyes over the nearby shells. Since we're here anyways, how about we start by checking our clues in this room? It is reference room after all. There's bound to be something worthwhile. Alright. Damn, bro. She was... She was chomping on that boy's neck. Like it was nothing. She said, mmm. Give me that neck. Delicious. Nothing on this shelf seems particularly relevant. I mean, she did flip it all up. Nothing on this shelf? Maybe on the ground? It's a dead body there. Can't read that, it won't let me. Anything up top? There's a numerous scrapbooks on this shelf, each containing various newspaper and newsletters clippings. One particular stands out in an old school, three ring binder filled with articles that are over three years old. 1973, serial killer, serial kidnapping and murder at Heavenly Host Elementary. That's here, right? There was an article about that in one of the classrooms too, I think. Bashing the hopes and prayers of their concerned parents, three of the kidnapped children returned home tonight in body bags. Local police gave an official statement at the, at around four, around four o'clock yesterday afternoon. Yukikano. Ryo Yushizawa and Kyo and uh and Tokio uh Tokiko Tokiko Tsuchi previously reported missing if were found dead in the basement room beneath the school. The circumstances behind their murders are still under investigation, and a suspect with ties to the school's teaching staff is in questioning. First responders report a shock grisly murder scene, a shocking grisly murder scene, and have expressed corners cons corners concerns. And every allowing, even allowing the families of the deceased to see their children, significant, uh, wow, significant mutilation is said to have occurred, and the officials, I believe, the sight of this may, may exuberate the already, uh, may exuberate the already delicate mental states of the berate. God, it's a lot to read. A lot of big words. The sole survivor of this unspeakable crime is 70-year-old Sachiko Shinozaki, who remains in shock from the experience. Her testimony may prove invaluable towards closing this case and putting the uh, putting the horror behind us. However, so police are, however, so police are anxious to question. I guess it means some. I'm assuming that's a typo. Meanwhile, other pa other parents have already begun calling Heaven Host safety procedures into question in the wake of this tragedy. Members of the PTA have. There's a snippet from another page as well, which includes photographs of the three victims as well as the lone survivor. <laughs> Pictures of the three and the lone survivor who just looks guilty as shit. <laughs> oh man. I've seen them too. I guess they were killed here. So now they curse this place or something. So horrible to hear what happened to them. I've been looking at them as scary evil spirits all this time, but really they're just victims themselves. Especially that one and the far at the far left. She got it bad. Be careful, Suzumoto. Compassion can be dangerous in a place like this. It's not unheard for a spirit to lose its sense of humanity after dying. In other words, these kids aren't necessarily going to play nice with living beings anymore. What do you think happened to the murderer? They're still fucking alive. Hmm, here we go. They talk about him in this one. 
Accused child murderer commits suicide. 37, uh, 37. The 33 year old former teacher believed to have committed the now infamous uh, adolescent kidnappings and murders were found dead early yesterday morning. After being deemed mentally unfit to take responsibility for his actions, he was placed in intensive psychiatric care, but escaped two nights ago. The psychiatric ward com commissioned a manhunt, which. Com bleh, which. Com I can't even say the word. It was accumulated in the discovery of his hanged body in a room beneath Heavenly Host Elementary. Near the site of his shocking triple homicide, the cause of death was ruled a strangulation, as strangulation and strong is believed to be self-inflicted. inflicted. As these appear to be shown of remorse, uh, previously, there's previously thought beyond his mental capacity, the psychiatric ward has come close, has come under heavy fire since the discovery. I need to drink my water. I am fucking it up real badly here. God. Visual novels, a lot of reading. Even the murderer killed himself, huh? Guess there's no happy ending for anybody. Though the families of the victims were probably glad to see him go. Well, there's that one girl who was spared too. Isn't it kind of strange though? That there's not one single comment from the survivor's family? Every article is filled on commentary from friends and families of the deceased, but there's not a word to be found anywhere about the girl who was spared. I assume that was I assume that was by request to protect their privacy or something. Do newspapers really care about that though? The mass media are always always about chasing scoops. No matter what it takes for them to get, no matter what it takes for them to get it, who they have to bother. Doctor Doctor Tomokichi. Oh my God, a lot of fucking. Just a lot. Correspondence with Anna Sprout. God. Records of psychic phenomena. Letters to form. Logic, uh, letters to and from magic societies. Classic mystery novels. Not your typical elementary school reading material. There's no serial numbers or library cards or anything on them, though. So they're probably not the schools. That's true. Maybe these were bought in by other victims who got trapped here. Actually, it looks like there's a name stamped on most of these. Kibiki? Is that how you read those kanji? Wait, Kibiki? Wow, you're right. I recognize that name. You know the, you know the paranormalist? Na eh. The paranormalist? Naho Sinoki? 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 Fuck. Ko Kibiki is from Minter. He's a journalist. So that means Mr. Kibiki is in here too, I guess. But why? Damn, dude. That's a lot. Can we get the fuck out of this room now? I am saving that. That was a lot of reading that I do not want to redo. There we go. I guess we just head out now. I wonder how much time has passed since we got here. I don't know if I can trust my cell phone clock in a place like this. That's a good point. If space is being changed around randomly, there's no reason to believe the same thing isn't happening to time. I trust my stomach, though, and it's telling me that that dinner time has already come and gone. And now it's bad that... And now, uh, and now is about when good boys and girls should be go to bed. Should be go to bed? Should be going to bed. I have to admit, I am hungry. Oh, we're all going to starve to death. Maybe we should find... Maybe we should add finding food to our list, Shinozaki. But for now, I think it's about time we found a nice cozy spot to sit and rest for a while. I think I like that. As I'm really, really tired. Not so tired that I'm worried about getting possessed or anything, but tired enough. I guess we're gonna rest up in class 1A. And so the four of us headed to the safe spot we could think of. Settling in for a bit to to help calm our spirits and refresh our bodies. Almost immediately, both Kishinuma and Shinazaki sat down, closed their eyes, and fell fast asleep. Understandable, considering what they just experienced. 
Not like a light, both of them. Both of them are out like a life. The ones that w didn't die, and the two that did die are still awake. They must be exhausted. Jishinoma went through a great deal in turmoil to save an Ayumi, after all. Aren't you tired, too? I am, but I just can't bring myself to sleep. My mind keeps racing, wondering what Nari and the others are doing right now. I feel like I need to be ready to run out after them at, at a moment's notice. I know just where you're coming from. I get the same way when I think of Shig. I wish I could see his face right now, you know? Huh? Nana, what happened to your legs? I felt a chill in my stomach as soon as I saw them. They were the same bruise-like markings around Nana's slender thighs that I, that I seen before. But they become much darker in color. Oh, shit. That means her time is coming. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. They looked pink originally, as if she just rubbed her skin against something. But now they were dark, now they were deep dark purple, the color of grapes. Are you alright? Does it hurt? You mean the bruises? They've been there since before. Yeah, but they're darker now. Oh, you're right. Ah, what a weird color. What's happening? It's probably just a change color over time from the blood rushing t into the surface. I thought it's anything to worry about. Sorry. I just hope it doesn't leave a scar. Oh, it's gonna leave more than a fucking scar. True, you do have beautiful legs after all. Oh, please. No, I don't. I'm jealous. You're so thin and gorgeous. If I were as tall as you, Shig, Shig and I would sure look a lot more natural together. Is he your boyfriend? Uh-uh, nothing quite like that. I guess... I guess you could say he's just a really important person to me. He always stands by me, accepts me for who I am despite all my flaws, and always support me in whatever I choose to do. He sounds wonderful. Yeah. I'm not just saying this because we're in the same drama club, but he's like some kind of prince. Though if you ask Kishinuma, he's an evil wizard. Kishinoma has a thing for Ayumi, doesn't he? Oh, he has more than a thing for Ayumi. Fucking all the shit they went through. Oh, does that bother you? Or are you taking an interest, perhaps? No, nothing like that. Oh, okay. Alright. Sorry, I had to ask. Actually, Kishinoma's got it pretty rough. He's got a rival for Shinazaki's affections. Aw, but they look so cute together. I hope he gets the girl. He did all that work in the first game. Like, Jesus fuck. They're a lot alike in many ways, particularly in their complete inability to be honest about how they feel. I bet it's like, I bet it's a lot like you when you're with Morishigi, is it not? Oh, come on. I already told you it's not like that with us. Though, I guess I really don't know how to classify the way I feel. I mean, when I do finally see Shig, how should I react? What do I want to tell him? What do I want him? Uh, what do I want him to do? Do I want him to pull me into his arms like Ichinuma did with Shinozaki? Or do I just want him to pat me on the head and tell me I did good? I guess I won't really know until the time comes, if it comes. He'll come, just like it did for Kishinuma and Ayumi. Thanks. I hope Mochita is able to reunite with Yuka and, and Nakashima. Nakashima? Yeah, Nakashima too. Miss Yui and Shinohara. We'll all meet up and go back home. And probably exchange the photo we took together after a culture festival. I really want to see my friends too. Oh fuck, here it comes. Here it comes. She's gonna be like, did you see him? Oh, I'm at 52%? Holy shit. God. The darkening's gonna take over me. It's gonna take over my soul. I'm gonna fuck it. I'm gonna die. Oh, I'm so sorry. I've just been talking about myself all this time. Your friend is super dead, by the way. I think... 
I want to go scout around for them real quick. I have to go to the bathroom anyways. Oh, you shouldn't leave. We should both stay here. You, that is a bad idea. By yourself? Isn't that dangerous? I'll only be gone for a moment, and then I'll get my legs chopped off. I guess thinking about her friends got her all worried. She probably just couldn't sit still any longer. Suzumoto? Kishinuma, you're awake. Shouldn't you go with her? Just to be safe? You probably should. You stay here and keep an eye on Shinazaki. Thanks. I will. If anything happens, just yell real loud, okay? I'll smack Shinazaki till she wakes up and the two of us will come running. Okay. The hallways are pretty dark, so I think I'm going to borrow one of the candles. Just be careful. Once you find Ogasa Ogasawara, you two should come right back here. You got it? Oh, she's going to die. She is so going to die. Oh my fucking god. Her, her bruises on her legs. She is so going to get them cut off. The bathroom fell empty. There's no indication of Nana's presence whatsoever. Maybe we passed one another without realizing it. Nana? What's wrong? Oh! Yep, that's the sound of someone getting cut. Oh no. The sound that echoed through the halls was like that of a butcher slicing up a large chunk of meat bone. Bone and all. And this sound was accompanied by the dimly lit figure of Nana sprawled across the ground in front of me. Oh, her legs got cut. Or rather, part of Nana. It was really just the top half of her body, severed cleanly at the thighs. Her legs were completely gone. Can I... I totally forgot the button for, uh... God. There was a button. Was it X? Oh, I don't wanna... It was X. Damn, dude. You can see her legs are back there. Oh! I knew it! Oh, man. And the worst part is she was still fully alert and aware. Just like the Spongebob guy. My legs! Damn, girl, you're, you're dead. Just like your fucking friends. This grisly sight was too much for me to handle. I became weak in the knees and I fell backwards, landing on my butt. I couldn't move. Damn. Damn, there is not much I can do about that. Nana was bending and contorting her back and writhing on the ground as if struggling to escape the pain and the fear. I wanted to help her, but I had no idea what I could do. Nothing ever had prepared me for a situation like this. I couldn't stand up. I couldn't even think. The slight, the sight of Nana's squirming body, gushing blood everywhere, <laughs> gushing blood every which way, was burning itself into my mind. It was the most frightening thing I've ever seen. It's not... It's nothing. There's nothing I can do. I could sense the presence of another person in the shadows just behind Nana's torso. Who was it? The darkness was all encompassing past a certain point, giving only the... Given only the visage, notice the visage. The, the vaguest, vaguest, there you go, not visage. The vaguest notion of a human silhouette within, a, within an inkling black void. Who's there? That's the locker room. No, wait, it's not. Where is this? What's back there? The door should have led into the pool locker room, but the lightning, or lack of it, was completely wrong. There was also an indescribable an indescribable foul odor wafting from out out from within, so powerful and revolting that I felt I could never leave my senses again. And whatever and ever can't even fucking read. And whatever being was lurking in the shadows of the horrible room was getting closer to me, step by step. Oh shit. Oh no. Better get up and run. 
I still couldn't make out a single feature, but frankly, I didn't want to. His existence alone was threatening enough. Whoever it was, I could sense a shadow prostrating itself over Nana's head, as if preparing to swallow it whole. Like a crocodile, in fact, the shadow was beginning to resemble a crocodile more and more. Was this even a person? Oh, fuck. Damn, Nana, I'm so sorry. The figure was not fully visible. What? Oh, was not. Was now fully visible. It was indeed a person, I think. He grabbed Nana by the head, then turned and began dragging her into the horrid room. She was clearly nearing death, as it took everything she had to scream and protest. Her voice was getting weaker, and writhing less pronounced. I couldn't even imagine how painful it must be to have one severed body slowly drag across the floor, explode side down. Oh, damn. It would be bad enough if having my head held in the massive, filthy grip. No, grip isn't the right word. It really was more like a bite. I can't, I can't save you. I can't save you. There was the panic, primal screams of a person's last moments on Earth. It's a sound no one should ever have to hear, much less produce. And once you hear it, it's the kind of thing you ne you'd be hearing again for the rest of your life. Nothing can ever wipe it from your memory. It stays with you. I sat there, dumb dumbfounded, so disturbed that I couldn't that I could barely breathe and watched the slow slither of Nana's body as she disappeared into the unknown. It only took a few seconds for her to vanish into blackness, but those were the longest few seconds of my life. And once she was gone, only a wide swath of blood remained, tracing her path down the hall and across the hellish threshold. Nana, I have to save her. There's no... There's nothing I can do. Oh. Oh. That is... Oh, man. Yeah, with all my courage, I ran at full speed towards the black void, but found no room to enter beyond the door. It was nothing more than a solid wall. Oh, shit. No. Where is she? Where is she? Where is she taken? It was just as Shinozaki had said. Right before my eyes, a human being was pulled into a space that simply no, lo simply no longer existed. All that of reality. And yet, I could still hear her. I can't even describe how frightening I was. How frightening? How frightened I was. All I could do was scream and take off running away from there. Anywhere else but... Uh, anywhere, el eh, anywhere else is preferable. Oh man. Am I gonna die next? How's my mark looking? Why am I going this way? Nana isn't this way. She's behind me. I need to go back. I need to save her. I need to save Nana. But I'm just getting further and further away from her. No, I can't. I just can't. It's just not possible. Damn, dude. There's nothing you can do in that situation. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Nana. I couldn't do anything to save you. If only I- if only I told her her friend was super dead. What do I say to Kishinuma and Shinozaki? We were just talking with her. Now look what's happened. Her legs were torn right off. Right along the lines of those bruises. Oh fuck. That means I'm next. Wait. The bruises? Nana was sliced up in the exact spots where it- where it- where it had the- or she had those marks. I have markings just like that on my stomach. 
But that doesn't make any sense, right? It's just a coincidence, right? What's wrong with me? Worrying about myself at a time like this. But I can't help it. Open my compact mirror and hesitantly brought it down my abdomen. Lifting my shirt and loosening my skirt a bit to get a better look. Oh god, no. How are we looking? Oh. I didn't have to look very hard. Oh damn. It's over. The color of the bruise on my abdomen was darkened significantly. It was far more pronounced now. Practically pulsating in purple purplish red. It looked more like some kind of some kind of demented crest that has surfaced from deep inside my body. Damn, dude, that means I'm next. It's darker. More clearly outlined. It looks bigger now, too. What is this? Why is it here? It's just a bruise, right? I'm sure it'll go away on its own over time if I leave it be. I just kept telling myself that it would go away on its own. It was nothing. And I was starting to believe it. Feeling somewhat placent, I lifted the mirror up and, pre and prepared to shut it and pull it away from... Uh, and put it away when I caught a quick glimpse of my face. I saw fear. I saw sadness. I saw defeat. But I also saw something else. Oh, the ghost is behind me. There's a bruise on my face. What's going on? What's happening right here? No. At first, I I doubted my eyes, but I was I doubted my eyes, but I wasn't seeing things. Nor I was, nor there was a smudge in the mirror. It was another discolored bruise, just like that on my abdomen. It was no, it was nowhere near as dark as it. It was nowhere near as dark, but it was definitely there. And given enough time, it would probably get a lot darker. When did I get this? Maybe it's just a... Maybe it's just dirty. Maybe I just need to wipe it off. I tried spit shining it away with my finger, but all it did was make it wet. And each time I pressed down on it, the surrounding skin would turn white, creating greater contrast and making it stand out more. It wasn't going away. It wasn't going away. And if it just... And, it, and if it just kept getting darkening... I might wind up like Nana. No, please. Torn apart at the seams. Maybe what's wrong? I'm gonna die? Nana's dead? We're all gonna die. I thought I heard you scream. No one can find him. No one can find him her, huh? I don't like that at all. I'll help you search, Shizumoto. There's no reason to search. He's dead, man. Stay back. I took a step away from them despite myself. What's going on? Please, stay back. Nothing's going on, I swear. Did something happen? Did you see something in the compact? It's nothing. I didn't see anything. I'm fine. Fine, everything's Daijobu. No, I couldn't let them see me like that. I didn't want them to see the hideous bruise. Oh, now I'm running away. Oh no, now I'm running away. The darkening is quickly getting to me. Oh shit. I'm gonna run straight into a wall and go splat. Fucking... This is gonna be all over, man. What do I do? I'm running again, but where? Where am I going? I have to get rid of this. If I don't, if I can't, then I... Then I wind up like Nana. Oh, you ran into the infirmary. Oh, you're fucked. Your fate is sealed. I have to hurry. I have to find some way to making this go away. I had some concealer in my makeup bag. Maybe I could hide it. 
There we go. Can't see it. Can't see it all. Can't see it at all now. All I have to do is get some sleep. And when I wake up, the bruise will be long gone. I know it will. Yeah. I was getting worked up over nothing. Just a little mark on my face, after all. Probably just a result of all the stress I've been feeling here. Once things calm down, I c it will go away for sure. Oh no. You better run back out into that hallway. Get the fuck. Huh? I don't remember closing the door. Oh, your fate has been sealed. It wouldn't open. And it wasn't like it was locked. Rather, it felt almost like if someone was holding it closed with superhuman strength. Suddenly, I realized why. The door was wrapped multiple times over with thin black threads. How had I not noticed these a moment ago? What the? Is this human hair? I looked at it a bit more closely and, and concluded without questioning that this is exactly what it was. I felt an unpleasant, an unpleasant heat radiating all, all along my back muscles across my entire spine. I was being watched. There was some sort of moist, lukewarm presence in the room with me, and slowly but surely, I could sense it moving. Who's there? Who's behind me? I was too scared to turn around. This room. Hi, how's it going? It was a little girl wearing a red dress. Probably a first or second grader. Her skin was as pale as pottery, contrasting with, uh, with her lacquer-like hair. And she looked somehow familiar. This is the girl from the newspaper who survived the murders. Sachiko Shinazaki. But that can't be right. That happened over 30 years ago. This room is so lifeless. I know what it needs. A human autopsy model. I wanted... Oh. Oh. She wants to dissect the... That's way worse than my first death. What? Oh. Oh, no. Get the fuck out of my ear. Oh. It went right into my right ear. Will you come to play with us again? No. When I come to play with you again, you better get the fuck off of me. Something was dripping onto the back of my hand. Are these tears? That's what I thought at first, anyways. If I had started to cry, I wasn't aware. But considering what was going through, it would have been surprising anyway. Or is it tears, or is it... 62%? Oh, it's happening. I wonder just now how much I cried since getting sealed up uh, in this godforsaken place. Probably more than I ever cried before in my entire life. But these weren't tears, were they? Was it blood then? Did these children do something to me? Sure enough, I reached up and touched my face. My finger came in contact with something sticky. Something sticky and red. What, what did you do to me? We didn't do anything. Sashiko's answer was cold and disinterested. It came accompanied with a crooked, wry smile. She was just a child, yet one glance from her made her hair, made the hair on my body stand on end. How about you take a look in the mirror? Well, wait. Just a little bit, though. Such good face somehow made me feel as if there might be two sides to her. One gentle, and one not. But regardless of which I was dealing with here, I wasn't about to go easy. Oh, easy? I wasn't about to go against her recommendation. I was legitimately curious myself. So I took out my compact, opened it, and... Why? <laughs> oh. Oh. Your life is coming to an end. The bruise I concealed with makeup and sprung back to the surface once again, though it could hardly be called a bruise anymore. 
My skin had literally split open from inside, and blood was begin beginning to seep out through the pinkest fr fracture. Fracture? 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 Fracture. Bead by bead. This can't be happening. It can't be. It's happening. That's all you. If you hadn't fought, if you haven't fought it, you might have been able to die quickly. But you were gonna die. You're gonna be torn apart along those cracks on your belly. Oh, way worse. All oh, way worse than the first one. Oh. The bruise along my stomach and abdomen have followed, uh, have followed suit, spilling open and dripping dark red blood everywhere. At this point, I completely lost any ability to think or reason. I was a goner, and I knew it. What's worse than dying is an instant by getting smashed against a wall, getting slowly, carefully torn apart. That's what. Damn, dude. Time to begin the autopsy, everyone. Yeah, I was a goner. I couldn't fight it. Somewhere deep in the pit of my soul, I knew there was no way out. This unimaginable cruel fate was predestined. I couldn't escape. For sure. I tried to run. I squirmed and resisted with every last bit of strength I had. The fate had me by the ankle. It wasn't about to let go. If only I could force myself to lose consciousness. Maybe I could avoid the unbearable agony that I knew was coming. But sadly, I wasn't that strong-willed. Oh, fuck! I could feel the hands of children all over my body, coming from literally every direction. And they were really digging. This is... this is way worse than the first game. Shig? Your dear Shig won't be coming to rescue you. No chance, no hope. Damn, Sachiko, you're just... you're an asshole. I was seized with a pain unlike anything I've ever even imagined possible before. I couldn't talk, I couldn't move, I couldn't even think. I felt like my head was going to explode under the pressure of the millions of nerves all telling me my brain, all telling me my brain just how much every part of my body hurt. And it didn't stop. Every moment, it grew worse and worse. Then I began to drift away. What an awful stink. Let's decorate the wall, or maybe the hallway outside, with our new autopsy model. <laughs> the school is getting livelier all the time. <laughs> Sachiko's voice sounded like it was far in the distance. It was then that I realized the agony, had been f the ag uh, the agony I'd been feeling had changed. It was no longer pain, but chill. I didn't hurt more, it was just cold. So cold that I couldn't even feel my body. My final wish is that it should be the one to find my body. As long as it's not too revolting to look at anyways. I want him to think I'm pretty. I miss him. Shig, bro. 
Demise, an alternate universe tale. Damn. Well, in the first game, her wish... Her wish kind of came true. But he didn't think she was beautiful. Damn. Number three, Encounter Chapter is now playable. Oh, shit. Sorrowful Testimonies. I got an achievement. The price of nice. Oh, that's a horrible price. Jesus. Let us take a look at what they got in the soulful testimonies. Ooh. Interesting. We have Yuka. Well, not Yuka Yuka, but we have the teacher. And we have Kishinuma. Miss Yui. I want to save the best for last. So let's do... Oh wait, no, this is Mayu. Oh, that was nice. But let's get to the real situation at hand here. What does my boy Kishinuma got to say? どうでしたか一本道で行けましたかそれとも そんなに激しくやってないんですけどね。まあ、僕だなんかはね、割と激しめのシーン、ちょっとショッキングなね、シーンたくさんやってるんでね。そういったところもぜひ含んで楽しんでいただければいいかななんて思っておりますんで、何
for right now this is it so uh if though for those who want to watch the first corpse party game all that is archived on the youtube channel and tomorrow night well you know next stream is going to be more vampire bloodlines masquerade vampire the masquerade bloodlines and then uh I don't know what I'm going to be streaming the night after that. Probably more Ghost of Tsushima, or if not, we'll just do more Corpse Party. So, that's going to be it. I want to say thank you to everyone who came and watched live and on the Twitch VODs. And if you're watching on YouTube, thank you very much. Uh, if you if uh, if you like the stuff, if you like the content, you like the video, if you like the playthrough, then... Think about subscribing if you already are subscribed and think about clicking the bell to get notifications. And for other future streams, the schedule for that is in the description. It is also in the About Me page on Twitch. And follow me on Twitter if you want to do that. I may not be as active on Twitter, but I say things from time to time. So that's pretty much it. And as always... I want to say thank you again to everyone for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Stay happy, stay healthy, and take care.